Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we are the Nantucket Historical Commission, convening for our regular monthly meeting. We're meeting by Zoom. Um, we're being recorded. Uh, and I'm going to go around and take a roll call, make sure that everybody is present and can hear me okay and that we can hear you. So I'll start with Mickey Rowland. Here. Uh, Barbara White. Here. Clement Durkees. Here. Tom Montgomery. Here. Angus McLeod. Here. Uh, Susan Handy. Here. David Silver. Here. And we have our preservation planner, Holly Bacchus. Good morning from home. And it looks like Mary Bergman from NPT is with us as well. Hi, Mary. Hello. Um, great, so um, thank you all for your flexibility with meeting at 1030 today. And I know we do have some people who have to um, continue to drop off at noon or drop off right at 1230. So um, I think hopefully we'll be able to really uh, spend some time talking about our objectives for the year um, and making that really into a work plan. Um, that's the main objective for the meeting today. Um, we do have uh, some announcements and some old business. Um, I, Mary, unless you wanted to make a public comment, I'm not seeing any members of the public here for comment. Nope. Okay. Um, we have some minutes. Angus sent me some typos, um, which I will correct, but are there, and we only have minutes for March 2nd, so we're still um, going to catch up with the January minutes, but any comments um, or changes other than Angus's typos to the minutes? No. Nope. Okay, Angus, thank you for reading the minutes. <laughs> I read them. <laughs> I know everybody. Thank, thank you for catching typos. <laughs> okay, so we'll make the administrative typos and um, I will take a vote on the minutes. A motion? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Angus. Uh, Mickey? Aye. Um, Clement? Aye. Tom? Aye. Angus? Aye. David? Aye. I am aye. So the minutes are approved. Um, okay, some old business. So uh, some letters were in the packet. Um, we sent the letter to um, our SHPO uh, with our comments on the um, decision not to support the Three Beaver Street tax credit application. Um, we also saw the coverage in the paper and I reached out to have a conversation with the leadership of this commission and everyone felt that the um, article was really written with a certain intention that didn't necessarily reflect um, the purpose of this commission. And so we wrote a follow-up article, um, or sorry, a follow-up letter just clarifying that. Um, I hope you all are comfortable that we did that and feel that it reflected what we've discussed in the past. Did anybody want to make any comments about the um, article or the letter? No, thank you for doing that. That was an excellent clarification. Good. Any concerns about um, or comments about the letter? Okay, seeing none. Um, I also, you know, um, put in the packet a letter from the MHC, which I'm actually going to share on the screen. Um, so I, um, you know, you send over things over, you want to make sure you get them. And uh, I didn't expect any feedback on our letter, but I did want to make sure it was received. Um, and I was able to speak with Elizabeth Sherba, who is a um, okay in charge of the tax credit program at the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And uh, she uh, shared some interesting things. She told me that um, a little bit more about the process, which I think is important for us to understand um, the process at the MHC. So she said when they get the applications in, they actually have a checklist. Um, and I guess this is the see, review and recommendation sheet. Um, and they go through and they look to make sure that everything that they are expecting is there. Um, and in this case, they noted, um, I think they noted that they need a letter from the historical commission. Anyway, they did note that they needed a letter for the historical commission. So that is, um, 
something that they look for. I guess it's maybe somewhere else in here. Um, and then they uh, they make a um, suggestion for next steps, which you can see they recommended an in-depth NPS review. So they actually communicate with the Park Service. So even though there's a federal program and a state program, they communicate very closely. Um, and they send information to the Park Service. And they actually sent our letters and our comments over to the Park Service. Um, so as you can see, Tom, could you mute? What's that? Could you mute your phone? Because we're hearing your, you know, CB radio. My phone is not near the computer. Can you mute your Zoom? Can I use my Zoom? Could you put it on mute, your Zoom? Oh, mute? Yeah, thank you. Great. Perfect. Um, great. OK, so um, it says that uh, the MHC had a lot of comments on this application. Um, including clarification regarding how the new basement level meets floor mitigation. So what Elizabeth Asherva told me was that when they're seeing these elevations, they want the park service to look at whether or not the elevation is being conducted in um, compliance with the guidelines is for flood mitigation that have been issued by the park service, which includes, you know, if you're going to elevate your structure and then you're going to put your mechanicals right in the basement on the floor, it sort of defeats the whole purpose of elevation. So they wanted to check about that, which was also a question that we had. Um, they had issues with the new entrance because they felt that, you know, there if you're going to recreate something, if it's going to be a historic reconstruction, you actually need to have documentation that really shows the original entrance so that such that you could do a historic reconstruction, not just that there was an entrance there. We also had issues about that. Um, they actually had questions about the dormer and they had a lot of questions about the fireplace. And it says a sizable chimney is a character defining feature of a house of this time period. And they had questions about the chimney. Um, anyway, they had a lot of questions similar to ours and more. Um, and all of this was sent in at the end of January. So, and there they were waiting for um, for feedback about this. So I, I took a couple things away. First of all, you know, we got a lot of pushback um, on that we were even asking these questions. It was implied that maybe we didn't even know what a historic reconstruction was. And I think it's pretty evident that everything that we were asking was completely correct and that we were right to ask it. Um, it tells us that the MHC and the Park Service are in close communication and have systems for communicating about these things involving federal and state funds. Um, and that by following up the way we did, it was very helpful to them. Um, and that they're looking out and they wanna hear from us. So that was also very helpful. And lastly, it made me wanna to add to our sheet, you know, our cover sheet that we developed that we might wanna ask, have you received any comments from the MHC? And if yes, can we have a copy of them? Because we had this meeting in February Wonder yes, Tom. Yeah. Can anybody else hear that? Sounds like we're at the airport. I don't know if it's just my computer or not, but it's very disconcerting. Someone is, what, what, Holly? It, it sounds like it's coming from Tom. I don't think it's coming from anybody else. Tom, are you running something on your computer monitoring audio from no, the airport? I don't think so. Let, let me, let me, I'll come back to you. I, I don't know. I think it's you have something crazy. on, on your computer. Are you listening to the Coast Guard radio or something? Okay, you're muted now, so we don't hear it. I think it's only on your side. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> multitasking. Um, and then the last thing is that, you know, the applicant got all of this information at the end of January. And we asked for these photos and follow-up information 
in November. They provided them the morning of our meeting and then, you know, wanted to us to give feedback without any time to review anything. Um, so and they didn't share with they didn't disclose with us proactively that they had the same questions coming to them from the park service. I mean, sorry, from the mass, the state, from the state. So I think we might want to add to our form, you know, if you've received feedback from the MHC, could you share it with us? Um, because I think, you know, really to be totally on the up and up, this you know, the, the answer when we started asking these questions should be, well, the state asked us the same questions instead of you guys are wrong. How dare you ask these questions, which is kind of what I heard them saying. I don't know if other people would agree. So I'd love to hear comments. And Holly, you know, I know you had a lot of back and forth with this applicant and that you supported this application. So if we'd love to hear from you as well. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think we all need to be aligned and pulling in the same direction and we should decide what direction that is. Comments? Um, I, I, if it's okay, thank you. Um, I was very happy to see these comments just because of, of you know, I, I figured that they were comments. I did bring up to Aaron um, with Epsilon um, the, the fact that um, I knew that these were already submitted to the states and the National Park Service. What, what exactly um, I was concerned on with the revisions and my understanding is that their application will be revised. So my question, based on the fact that these comments are dated from January 20th, and I agree that it would be nice to have those comments submitted to us. And yes, putting it on the uh, application would be, I think, beneficial. Um, and, you know, I would also like to see if maybe that's a communication that the state does, if it is something that they do, um, or if that's just something we need to ask for um, from the applicant. But nonetheless, I think it's important to note that these are these are dated, like you said, from January 28th, the HDC um, reviewed it and approved it in March. So at what point, you know, there are things that have been checked. I have not because I'm just looking at this yesterday for the first time correlated between the plans and this of exactly what they've adjusted. Um, obviously there's some things that they haven't, um, but um, I will also mention this, I'm still waiting for hard copy plans from the, from the agent um, to move it and move the COA forward. But um, I, I, there's a lot of these comments in here that I, I asked, you know, um, and agree with. I will notate that the comment about, um, you know, the, the basement, meeting the, the, the flood mitigation. Um, you know, one, I know this commission had really had concerns on the height increase. Um, again, Resilient Nantucket was adopted in conjunction with the National Park Service standards. So they were not created, as you all know, that would, that's a near and dear to my heart, um, not created at, in a vacuum. Um, this was considered a low elevation um, raise. I did question the um, the request to elevate it when it's not located within the flood zone. Apologize, I got my little one here. Um, so yes, I mean, there's a lot of things here that um, I was happy to see they're doing their job. That was also one thing that, um, you know, from a preservationist to a preservationist, from a planning perspective, we, we know that the National Park Service, the state is doing their job. Um, they're the ones that do, do the, the, the nitpicky, um, making sure it meets Secretary of Interior standards. I do think it's good that you all um, were, were spot on on some things um, that they've out, outlined, but I'm, I, I do question on at what level does this commission need to um, get into the, the nitty gritty versus allowing the historic, the, the, the states to do their work under the Secretary of Interior Standards. I, I, you know, we don't wanna step on, on toes. This one is a little, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a kind of a unique situation, but it's also, I think, a special structure. Um, I will notate this. I've been very supportive on this because I'm concerned on the flip side. I'm concerned when you do not have a method to track um, the retention of historic resources inside a structure, because remember the HDC only has the jurisdiction of the exterior. At what point does this structure 
going to be lost completely and, and become a gut rehab, which we know happens. So I'm trying to understand the balance between uh, saying, nope, it, this clearly doesn't meet and not give it local support when if we, if we do give local support, allow the technical review, making sure it meets the Secretary of the Interior standards at the state level and the federal level. Let them make sure that the applicant meets those criteria um, and let them go through that process. Because again, this could be a, um, a gut rehab. And I don't wanna speak for Clement being the non, um, uh, I guess the opposite of everybody else's on the, on the motion for support. Um, and I would love to hear her comments, um, but maybe that she, she has a similar um, concerns as I do that this would become a, a gut rehab. So those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. I, so I just want to pause for a minute. This is opening up a huge discussion that could take over our whole meeting. <laughs> so we can have this discussion. Um, but I just, I really want to, this commission to be focused on how we can be productive and spend our time in ways and on projects where we will be able to make a difference. And um, some of the things that Holly just said are really important to think about. For instance, philosophically, was Three Beaver, is uh, Three Beaver Street, <clears throat> has not even actually gotten its final COA from the um, HCC. So we're speaking hypothetically. Um, hypothetically, is a project as Three Beaver Street was proposed, is it a gut renovation? Or is it not a gut renovation? And therefore, even though this, you know, a massive ancient masonry, you know, central structure was lost and had to be lost under their plan, and this structure had to be elevated and doesn't even look like a 17th century or an 18th century structure 1755 structure anymore you know but that's what needs to be done is that okay you know philosophically where on this whole spectrum where do we as a commission want to be and where do we want to ask the hgc to be because the hgc are the only people who can really um you know, issue these COAs and they decided to issue this. So could I get some feedback from folks on the commission? Do you wanna talk about this more now or do we wanna move more into our work plan for the year and talk about it relative to our work plan for the year? Hillary, since I was the naysayer on this, I'd just like to say that I felt I um, was going with less information than was given. I was looking strictly at the packet um, I've heard subsequently that that chimney mass was intact not too long ago. Someone else who looked at the property and thought about buying it and the chimney mass was there at the time. So um, I, I sort of, I mean, I agree with Holly that we maybe should be lenient, but on the other hand, is the park service, are they relying on us? to be strict, I feel like they are. So anyway, I think this discussion needs to continue about how we look at each project going forward. I would definitely say that with the information I know now, I think this is a gut rehab. And, um, but I do think we shouldn't waste our time talking about this particular project anymore. We've done what we can, the park service has done what they can. Um, let's try to establish criteria going forward. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone want to second what Clement said? Yeah, Tom? Uh, maybe we do need to discuss this some more, but we've already spent one hour in two different meetings discussing this, and we only get two hours. So I think we ought to move on and maybe make this okay. a discussion for another time. Okay, I agree. And um, I am going to, though, add to our form um, on the tax credit applications that uh, if a question which says, have you received any guidance from the MHC or any feedback on applications with the expectation that that should be disclosed to us? Because I really didn't, what well, part of the reason why we had to waste so much time is because we were frankly, you know, monkeyed around with. Um, and we didn't, you know, so I don't want that to happen anymore. Um, okay, so. Um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to mention one thing. Very um, briefly, Holly, okay. Yes, just, yes, thank you. I, I, 
I think we just need to be careful on the gut rehab. I think at the end of the day, um, it, it could, it's not necessarily at a gut rehab. I think it could go okay. worse. So All right. well, again, that's I think something that for building with Nantucket in mind and for future tax credits. So I hear you, thank you. I, I, I understand why you're saying what you're saying. And I think everybody on the commission does, Holly. Um, okay, so um, the other letter was about the ATM article. I didn't get any feedback. I feel like I write these letters and I don't even know if anybody reads them, but whatever, we said that we were gonna write, that, write it, so we did. Um, we also, there was one other thing I, um, no, I think that that was everything, the ATM article. And then the last thing that we decided was the welcome letter to um, Steve, uh, to, uh, Steve Arsenault at the DPW. I haven't done that yet, so that's TB. Um, okay, can we have a no more than 10 minute update on what's happening with our um, survey uh, group that is meeting with Pal? I know you had a meeting with Michael Steinitz at the MHC and with Pal, um, and we also got the great news that we got another grant so we can move forward. So um, who wants to give that update? Actually, you know what, Holly? Could we hear, since Angus is leading the subcommittee, could we let Angus um, sure. brief everybody on the meeting? And I, I just would like to have Angus, and then we could also, Angus, then you can have some comments too, Holly. If that's okay, Angus, am I putting you on the spot? Holly, I, I was uh, noticing uh, in our meeting yesterday, it was taking a lot more notes than I was. So she might be better prepared to, to update everyone, but. Um, the, the, as you say, the good news is that, um, that we've got the, the new, um, grant money. Um, we reviewed the, um, the sample surveys. Uh, we talked about, uh, more specifics than, um, than were in those samples about, uh, the, the progression of alterations to the buildings and to the curbs. Uh, not, not the alterations to the curbs, but what curbs are existing, uh, other sort of hardscaping features that like that. Um, and uh, Holly and I were both were trying to get a, a, a better idea of, of how much more involved is that um, to, to be able to note. Um, and it, it sounded like, um, you know, it could be anywhere from the 10% to 300% more um, work in, in order to do the adequate research to be able to say, oh, this rear L was done at a later time. You know, if it's a 200 year old house, this was done 50 years later or 80 years later, um, as well as the other sort of internal changes that might compromise a historic structure. And um, I, I, I briefly brought up uh, the kind of applications that were being uh, brought at least before the Historic Structures Advisory Board uh, and therefore the HDC is the, um, just the, the scale of change that's happening with the buildings. And a lot of the times that's justified by um, th those parts being altered, having been new or newer. Um, so uh, uh, th that's still a concern. And Holly uh, mentioned that there was some room to move with the budget, um, but, but, you know, aligning that with how much extra um, information we would want in those forms. So um, uh, we also talked about a sort of an expedited way to be able to refer to at least the curbing. Um, if we if we can identify half a dozen different types, whether it's schist or new granite or old granite or brick or, or concrete, that that would be a uh, curbing A or curbing B or whatever, and that they could refer to. Um, but it seemed like it was involved to do much more than that. Um, and as far as the survey, um, or the overall survey and the survey areas, um, I, I think we've gotten to a really good spot with um, with the, the, uh, the areas being designated. So we can then sort of go on from here of choosing um, what, what areas are you know, to be first and second and third and fourth. Holly, what did I miss? <laughs> no, I think you you did really good on, on covering that. I think the biggest thing was um, we did talk a bit about um, Hillary, actually your comments that you sent to Jenny, because I really do think that that was an, an important. Um, 
about the your curbing um, and, and about the history of the L's. Um, Michael was very clear on what is, um, I guess, prescriptive, you know, what, what they require on the forum fees and having, he was the one that came up with the idea of, well, maybe having this some type of a, um, a code system, if you will, to understand. He said, but, you know, again, Ginny was concerned on how long for them to kind of soak up um, the study information on the curbing in general. Um, so that, I mean, we, we talked about it, if that's something that can be done and maybe it could be something we could work into the pilot for the fish lots, um, being it's such a densely populated area and it spans over 300 plus years. Um, there was that, um, there was the fact that, you know, a lot of the fish lot, they actually provide a good setting description. If you all looked at the form B's with the setting, and I think that's where it would kind of indicate, I mean, they already indicated that, you know, it's, it's got a um, brick sidewalk, you know, granite curbing, blah, blah, blah. But again, I know what we're looking for, if we could have a little bit more information. Michael also did mention that we also need to remind, rem remind ourselves that their purview is from the public way. Everybody on this commission who know who knows how the HDC works, who's on the advisory boards, you know that you're only looking at from the jurisdiction of the public way, and therefore the sidewalks actually technically isn't within um, the jurisdiction, but they do capture it in their photograph if they can, and they do capture it within their description. So I think we are we're getting there. It's that little step going forward if they can kind of tie in. Um, you know, the, the actual descriptions of, um, of the curbing. Um, other than that, I, you know, I did ask about um, comparing, my apologies, um, comparing the, don't know who you are, sorry, I'm home, um, comparing the um, form Bs that we have currently um, the old 1989, you know, that really wasn't prescriptive as MHC has their form Bs now, um, about the fact of contributing, non-contributing, and, and significant. And it, I wanted to know right off the rip if that would be a, a moot point. And it really comes down to, yes, it would be, because at the end of the day, the entire island is a, a local and national district. So um, that is a moot point. Then obviously looking at that, the survey, I just think that I brought up the fact that the HDC um, applicants sent, tend to focus on when something says it's non-contributing back in 89 and, and there's that education component. So I'm glad we'll get away from that. Um, something that I wanted to bring both to these commissions. The mapping, um, and please Barbara too, you were there. If there's anything that we're missing, please jump in. The map, um, and thank you um, to Tom, Angus, Barbara um, for, for assisting. And we, we the, the four of us got together and worked on um, the finalizing of the map. Um, and then I kind of rudimentary drew out based on their mapping system um, and sent it to PAL and um, Ginny's um, um, colleague there, Melissa, put it all together. And that's what we have now. I apologize, I can't screen share on my iPad. I don't have it saved, um, but it's, it's pretty good. I'll send it to everybody to take a look at. There are some areas that we kind of need to tweak. Um, but overall, uh, we're pretty good. We're pretty in line. Their, their next um, kind of um, phased deadline for finalizing this is uh, April 25th. So obviously between now and then, I'd like to um, have the subcommittee, if at all possible, um, just kind of take a look at that um, area and see where, where there, there's some areas that I uh, overlooked um, providing, you know, translating that information. But all in all, um, we're really good on target. I did wanna mention a little bit about what Angus said. I did bring up the fact that we do have some funding available as you all are probably aware when um, this was appropriated through town meeting for um, our HDC surveys, um, it was $50,000. This, this project is a $45,000 project total. Um, so we obviously we have $5,000 left out as how this works. Um, it does, sorry, she's watching. Um, this goes uh, back to the general fund if we don't use it, use it or lose it. So I have actually did um, have I've had conversations with town admin um, and, and they've been reaching out to finance to see how we can kind of continue the progression with uh, PAL 
if Powell's so inclined to move forward. I don't know how that works. I haven't looked back into the manual if there's something against since since MHC is so prescriptive with this federal funding. If if we can handle a separate um, scope and contract with Powell to utilize that five thousand dollars, so that's a work in progress. We do have some time, um, but I just wanted to mention that for the commission. Yeah, thank you, Holly. And we actually have that on under under other business. Okay. Um, because they're, uh, the, the money's for architectural surveys. So maybe we can, as a commission talk, after we talk about our work plan, how to work that in. Because yeah, it would, be ter- it would be unfortunate to not be able to use that for its intended purpose. Right. So thank you, Holly, for looking into that. Yep. One last point. Uh, yeah. Jenny did say that, that the budget for this as is, is very tight. Yeah. Uh, so I can understand. I think if, we, if we were to spread that five thousand over the surveys, um, you know, that that it's that's not adding a lot, but it would add a little bit. Um, so, yeah. all right. So let's talk about the additional budget. But what I'm taking away from the update is um, that they uh, are not sure if they can. That so that some of the feedback that was provided on the form B's is can we date the L's and include the dates of additions and the L's in the surveys because then the HTC will know if one L should sh- is historic or if it was done much later. And I guess the question is, we can do that, you know, if the time allows, but it's challenging and we can't always do it. And it also depends on whether or not the thing is visible, the addition is visible from the public way to the curbing. Um, Let's make sure they have our um, streetscape document because there aren't that many types of curbs, right? There's modern curb, and then there's the really old curb, like the 19th century curb, and then there's early granite 20th century curb um, and there and then there's concrete curb and they're pretty easily differentiatable and I'm not imagining that anybody's doing any kind of like carbon dating on these curbs I think this is just an eyeball with a flip book of these are the pictures of the four kinds of curb you tend to see and um, I think hopefully that should be easily answered because we did try to take photographs and identify all of that type of curb in our booklet. Um, and then I heard that we're pretty much on track and um, you guys are, are moving this ahead. The next check-in is going to be at the end of April. Oh, and the map. I would love for the map with the neighborhood, with the um, designations, the whole island map to be distributed to this commission. Could that go around so that everybody could see it? Yeah, I mentioned that. Yep, I will forward okay, that. Great. I okay. literally just received it Wednesday and I was out of the office, but yeah. We, okay. we do, um, we can send that out. I just want to mention real quick about the, the curbs. Um, there would be, granted, there's all that work that you all did in the streetscapes um, report. Um, there would be some sort of like disclaimer um, that, that PAL would indicate saying that, you know, due to time res- restraints, you know, they're not liable for including, you know, the wrong information for the curbing because again this is something in addition to what they would typically be doing so i just want to mention that yeah that's fine okay uh tom right may, may i ask him something of uh maybe i guess uh, holly um we i didn't want to take up the time yesterday but uh do they are they using this that we prepared uh, as far as curbing and stuff like that they should be. I know it's been directed to them, but I'm going to send it out um, to them again. Yep. Okay, yeah. okay great. Um, any more questions about our uh, survey or the new survey? I mean, the new survey, we have a lot of work to do, but it's just been awarded and Holly's got to get her, she, Holly has a lot to do on that. So I don't think we need to talk about it yet unless you have any questions, Holly, for the commission. No. Okay, any other questions on the current survey before we move on to the discussion of our work plan? Okay, seeing none. Okay, so we have had these uh, four bullet points on our agenda for like four months now, and we also had them presented. Um, We had some feedback. I'm glad to see that Ken Bogrand has joined our meeting. Welcome, Ken. we, uh, we had some feedback with questions and concerns, which of course we wanna be sensitive to and respond to. Um, Susan Handy and I also had a chance to talk about bullet point number two a little bit and had some additional thoughts about that. Um, 
But I just want to frame the discussion first. You know, these were ideas that we came up with at the um, in the sum at the end of the summer, in preparation for a presentation to the. Um, oh, Thank you, Tom. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is either. Um, so yeah, you're muted now, so we can't hear you, but hopefully. Um, so uh, we came up with these ideas and um, we, we don't have to work on any of these things, okay? We can decide what we wanna work on. And I just, I want to work on the things that we are likely to be able to achieve and that we feel will have the biggest return and the biggest impact um, on the things that this commission cares about on behalf of preservation for the island and our mission. Um, so the items on the work plan are initiate preservation plan for town owned historic resources. Um, so these are the list of buildings that um, and parks and monuments um, and objects in town owned ways um, that are historic resources to be organized to think about how the town should take care of them. Um, initiate discussion with tribes and state archeologists. I just wanna, I, I wanna re re, um, restate that bullet point. The objective is not to initiate a conversation. The objective is to have some understanding of what archaeological resources are and how we hope to advise the public to take care of them and to make sure that indigenous people are recognized um, and the prehistory and the colonial history that is in the ground is recognized and respected. And we really have no understanding right now. Susan is an archaeologist, so she has more understanding. But this, we do not, as a town or as a commission, have a point of view on that. And I think that we should have a point of view. Um, the next one is assess archival needs with respect to historic town records. So the view being that documentation and preservation of documentation is incredibly important to the history of a place. So um, having some kind of comprehensive view instead of like, oh, the town clerk is looking after the town documents and the Athenaeum is looking after the Athenaeum documents and the NHA, to have some kind of a view about what are the resources in the town, like just name them all and um, have a point of view about how accessible they are, if any of them are threatened, how, um, is there any additional education that can be done? Uh, and Barbara had started to do a little bit of work on that. Um, the last is develop concept for a small loan fund. Um, the concept of the small loan fund is modeled on um, the town of Arlington. Arlington, uh, about 30 years ago, got a um, community development block grant of $100,000, um, which seeded a public-private partnership to offer very small, low-interest loans to homeowners of privately held um, listed historic buildings so that they could afford to maintain their buildings. Um, and the loan has been self-sustaining, the loan fund has been self-sustaining ever since. So for instance, um, you have a family home, it scutters are falling off, um, it is uh, a listed, you know, on the register, national register, and you cannot afford the um, eight thousand dollars that it's going to cost to replace the gutters. So you can apply for this uh, low interest loan, um, which is managed by a third party bank, um, and they would give you the eight thousand dollars, and it would just be, you know, there'd be a payment schedule. You'd make the repair, etc. That's basically what it is. So the question is. Um, this is, well, the premise is this is another tool for preservation because there are no small loans at low interest available to folks who have private buildings, right? You know, you can't, they're not eligible for tax credits. Um, they're not eligible for CPC funds. So um, I think 
maintaining buildings is very important to preserve buildings. People want to maintain their buildings, but they can't afford to. So the question is, how much of a need is there on Nantucket to do this? Because I actually think we could do this if we identified the need, but it's, you know, we need to like do a bunch of research, identify the need, develop the um, partnerships, and it would just be take a lot of time, but it's, I think it's doable. And I just don't know. I don't, this gets back to the question of how can we make the most difference? What can we do that will really move the needle on preservation? Um, the thing that is not on this list is the work that we were doing through the CLG to um, around building with Nantucket in mind. And uh, we do not control the, well, the, the design guidelines are the purview of the HDC, but we are a stakeholder because the HDC is set up to establish and review and enforce and permit architectural design and changes to historic resources. And we, of course, you know, if we didn't have an H, if there are towns that don't have historic districts that have historic commissions, and one of the things they do is review whether or not they should establish a historic district. And they actually can even serve as the historic district if they want to, or if that's not if they want to, but if that's what the town asks them to do. So um, we're certainly a stakeholder. Um, and it's not on our work plan, but you know what? We could decide actually the number one thing that we need to do is um, somehow figure out how to evaluate how well we are enforcing our design guidelines um, and you know, get the work going with the HDC to make a difference there. That's not on our plan um, because it's just not, you know, I don't know why it's not on our plan. So that's the review of our plan and I'm gonna stop talking now and I hope that commissioners will ask me questions, ask questions of each other and that we can have a really productive conversation. We have lots of time to have it. Barbara. Oh, you're muted. Oh. One of the things that came up, I'm talking about the documents right now with um, the mass historical yesterday was the um, gap in maps from a certain time period in the 1890s and through to um, the water company, um, whatever. And, but it also came up that uh, deeds are not digitized here back a cer certain, after a certain point in time. And that that makes it difficult for, they were talking specifically about researching houses uh, at the MHC. Um, and I felt like that is something I think that might be very useful is to, um, it would be a huge task, but to continue to digitize um, the deeds. Um, they're beautiful records in the town, but you have to go to the town. And I thought it was interesting that the MHC was aware of it and brought it up as a point. That's all, that's all I wanted to say. The, the building record, thank you, Barbara. The building records are also not digitized. Um, and I'm sure in some places, they are. Um, okay, so uh, that's kind of a, a comment that we've had feedback from the MHC that enhancing accessibility of through digitizing some documents is beneficial for preservation and for the survey work. I'm glad you brought that up, Barbara. There, there were a few th things that they said are core tools of being able to do these surveys that they do. And um, and one of them is the, the maps that are sorely lacking and, and the access um, as Barbara just brought up to the deeds. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's I, I couldn't help but to think during the meeting, this is so ironic. This is one of the most historic places with the least amount of historic information. <laughs> So, um, however, we can make that easier for, um, you know, future surveyors uh, and historians and preservationists, the, the better. Other comments about um, this potential project of archival needs? Ken, did you, I'd love to include you in this, in this discussion as well, Ken, because you know a lot about these things as well. Well, the, the 
when requests have been made uh, by, for instance, the town clerk, uh, and in some instances by the assessor's office relative to digitizing, uh, that, that is something that uh, the CPC is uh, eligible to make awards for. And so we have responded to requests in a positive way. Uh, so uh, uh, we don't initiate that, but, but it is an area of historic preservation that uh, CPC is eligible to uh, award funds for. Madam Chair, may I ask a question yes. again? Yes. Um, I'm wondering on that note, if if maybe as a NHC's work plan to help emphasize that, would it be beneficial for this commission to um, help applicants like the Registry of Deeds, like Town Clerk's Office, if they are applying for CPC funds to provide a, a letter of support in that effort, um, if that would be beneficial or if that would be just, you know, a waste of time. I'm just I'm trying to find uh, where this commission could help. Well, a, a letter of support is obviously uh, beneficial because it's one of the things that we look for in term. It's one of the conditions of the application itself to the CPC to be able to have an understanding that this is a beneficial need for the entire community. So uh, the, the 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 purpose of it, the accessibility of it, and and the reason why it's important to the community are all factors that go into the decision making process as to prioritization of the use of the various funds in the different categories that the CPC allocates. Thank you. I think that's that's something that this commission should notate um, and, and could help in that regard. Um, the CPC, I think it's been around for over 20 years now. I was probably the only uh, uh, teenager that was <laughs> um, supporting it when it was getting passed through town meeting. And um, I think oh, there's a lot of people that don't really understand what it does um, at times. And maybe this commission could help um, in that regard as well. So thank you. Appreciate that, Ken. Other comments or questions on a project around records? Anything anybody knows or any experiences people have had in trying to do research or encountering different town departments? And yeah, Barbara. I think maybe we should start simple with what you started by saying is note in a document or do an exploratory is where town records are. For example, Wanna Comet Water Company, the HTC, you know what I mean? The, um, well, the even the HTC, but where the documents are. And then from there, we could do a needs assessment as to which ones are priority. When I was in the town records last week, looking at marriage and deaths from the 1703s, and they are really very difficult to read. They're very faded. And I was, I was looking at them um, with gloves on, you know, I was aware of so very, how very fragile they are. Um, and I'm sure that we could come up with, with some research studies as to which are the oldest and which would be the most valuable. So, I mean, listening to the MHC people yesterday, you know, it led me to think maybe the deeds are the most important. Um, that wouldn't be my priority, but that, you know, yeah. So I think maybe we should start simple and find out where are they, what are they, and, and then go, and then ask the various yeah. organizations, which ones would you like to see digitized? That'd be my I think, start. I think that's a great suggestion. And I just want to comment to remind everybody that the historical commission is not only interested in buildings. I mean, a historical commission looks after the history of the town as well. David, you had a comment? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I I can't recall when exactly it happened, but the health department, I believe, digitized most of their records. And something that I noted just in, in doing research just as part of work is that oftentimes, you know, the quality of the scanning doesn't it doesn't translate. And I think that's just something to notate as as we look to digitize a lot of these records, like Barbara was saying, you know, with stuff that's hard to hard to read when you're holding it in your hands you do lose, you know, image quality when, when you're digitizing. So I think making that, you know, we don't want to waste time. So yeah. 
Yeah, you know, when I was preparing, when I was working on the CPC grant uh, for the sidewalks, which, by the way, had, I think, six letters of support from the community and didn't get a single positive vote at the CPC, sorry, just saying, um, <laughs> that there, I, I went through the, um, the application for digitizing records, um, and one of the complaints or one of the kind of premises for wanting to do archival preservation of the deeds that the assessor's office made was that they had digitized everything. And so the new financial, um, the head of director of finance wanted to like shred all of these old documents. And they had to point out that you couldn't read the digital scans um, and that you know, shredding these documents would be a travesty. And now they're beautifully preserved as Barbara had said. Holly. I just want to mention on that note, um, there's a difference between scanning something and archival scanning. Um, mm -hmm. That was one thing that I actually learned as an intern at the Historical Association after I was an intern at NPT. Um, and yes, that, that is very, very important. And that's why we're being able to see more and more of our um, historic resources being scanned and available on NHA's website. And, and the fact that you can search them and not have to pay for them is another added bonus to this community. So mm -hmm. yes, there's a big difference between the types of scans. Um, and that would be something to also notate in that um, kind of summary, if you will. Yeah, that needs assessment. All right, so I think where we're, could, could I propose that we might land on refining um, this archival needs that really what this means is um, a needs assessment, identifying what is out there, getting a little more um, information about the condition and types of documents, Work, working always with the departments. So we're really facilitating and making a request of the departments. Um, obviously, this would be something that would need to be led by the department and we would be kind of a facilitator a, and a um, communicator and a liaison. Um, and that, that that would be actually a really nice project. I mean, Barbara, I would love to work with you on this project, um, which you know we talked about in the past. So I guess that's just sort of one thing that's out there that any other refinement of that as a summary of what that project would be? No, okay. Um, so moving on, who is excited about another dis, uh, topic on this that would like to initiate a discussion about one of these projects. Yes, I see Georgia raising her hand. Oh, but you're muted, George. I can't hear you. But you're not muted. Oh, there you are. Um, I've always, I have always, like from my days at the Preservation Trust, been excited about the idea of a small loan fund. I know it's a very big idea and it's sort of a massive, but to be able to help people who have historic houses keep those houses in good condition um, is just a major part of helpful, being helpful to the community in a real way. And I know, I, I, as I said, it's a very big idea and how we would go about starting it, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but it's, a very, it's just critical. It's the next thing to what we were talking about in the CLG setting up a place where you can recycle your interior elements that you're not gonna use again. Those two big items to keep our historic fabric as intact as possible. But if, you're, if you wanna keep an historic house in a reasonable condition and you don't have a whole lot of money to do it with, there's not a lot, not a lot of ways we can help you except if we have some kind of local fund, local bank or a presence of a national bank on island that has a local pulse. Um, to help create this kind of fund. And I'd like, I don't know how we would start it, but I'd like to start talking about it here or with local bankers. So how, I, so I actually think the bankers would be the, I think we could do that, but I think we would need to go to them and say, this is the size of the market. These are how many people would be. So how would we go about figuring out how many customers there would be for a loan fund like this on Nantucket? Good question. I think probably we'd have to talk to them and be real estate agents to see who knows who knows the market of what's out there and who's in them, who's in those houses. Anyone have a 
ideas about this, how we would figure I'm out? I'm misapprehending this because certainly a lot of people who love historic houses don't necessarily own them. I mean, a lot of people on Nantucket don't own the houses they live in. And a lot of, a lot of newer houses on Nantucket are not historic. So, you know, the, the fabric has changed even in the last 20 years. So I'd like, it, it's hard to get your hands around how, what that market really is these days. I think there's a lot of historic resource structures that are owned by folks that, that just don't have the means. Um, they're, they're, that are elderly too, that are living in their old house that can't, you know, have their windows replaced um, or I should we say restored. Um, you know, th there are quite a few, I think people that are in that boat. Um, so I, I see the benefit. How do we identify them, Holly? How do we, I mean, how do we quantify that market? Yeah, quantify. So, quantify. you know, the, how many houses are there built before 1975, right? Because these are listed structures. Yep. Um, oh, and local. they really could be mid-century structures. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. I think we, we identify it as pre-1975. Yep. So yep. how do we get a number of the uh, account? Holly, how do we get a count of how many structures are pre-1975? That we should be able to do. Um, I believe there is a count that was recently done. Um, I want to say the NHL uh, update actually has that in there. Well, that said there were 5,000. Um, I know it's been and, done. So do we do a survey? Like, do we, um, do we do a survey of would you be interested in this? You know, we need, we need something to take to the bank. And I think maybe Cape Cod Five would be a good candidate, but we should take it to more than one bank and say, this is, you know, how many structures there are. Plus we did this survey, you know, um, and we had this sort of interaction. Yeah, David? I was gonna say, <clears throat> is it possible to, and, and maybe I know this better than you guys, but extract data from the MLS, take the properties that we've identified pre-1975 and, and run some, <clears throat> run some sort of function that would kind of weed out properties that have been transacted, let's just say in the last five or 10 years. So I would guess that properties that haven't sold more recently might be more in need. I think that's at least one filter that we could take that data at to try and identify some of the properties. That's a good yeah. idea. The only thing with the MLS, no offense to, to you, <laughs> no, David, I but I have found um, issues with MLS anywhere. I think that's nationwide. Um, but no, I do think that's a that's, that would help. Start. Yep. Start. You know, it would be amazing if we could have a real estate partner, like a, a real estate firm that wanted to help us as a pro bono. And um, it'd be great. Uh, I just have a, I just have an economic question. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, where is the money going to come from? The, the bank, the bank is is in fact not going to be uh, providing a, a free loan. Uh, and if the person doesn't have enough money to, in fact, be able to repair uh, the gutters, they're not going to have enough money to make a, a, a mortgage payment with respect to this. Uh, right. And 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 and. I mean, what, what's happened is, is that this happened a while before where the state, in fact, provided money about 15 years ago. And the state state funding was, in fact, put in place for this. And it was a a basically an interest free loan that if you lived in your house, you made the repairs uh, as long as you lived in it for 15 years, one fifteenth of the amount of money disappeared at the end of each year. So at the end of 15 years, the mortgage was, in fact, effectively paid back. But but that was because there was a pot of money there that would be able to be used. So unless you have a pot of money that you're going to be able to find, and unless you have the ability to administer this, I, I think you guys are venturing off on, on a, a challenge that that has a lot of re, a significant amount of detail and administration involved that that I'm not sure uh, we as a committee are structured to be able to address. Now, that's not the saying that you can't find a solution to it, but I think you need to really understand that those are the two critical issues with respect to it. Where's the money come from and how are you gonna administer it and how are you gonna monitor it and how does it get paid back? And unless you have answers to those as logical answers, uh, it becomes a very difficult concept to be able to, as noble as it may be, very, very difficult concept to implement. Thank you, Ken. David? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say a good place to start would be the Arlington model. I mean, Hillary, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. 
you know, they got a block grant 30 years ago of $100,000. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Nantucket doesn't qualify for, we're not a community development block grant um, community any longer, but um, this is why uh, I'm focused on doing things that will have the biggest return for preservation. You know, if we decided that there were, you know, 1500 homes on Nantucket that were his significantly historic and deteriorating because the homeowners couldn't afford to maintain their building. And, you know, we think that they'd be candidates for this loan. That would be very different from finding out that they're like 200. <laughs> so um, I think we could fundraise a fund. And this is where, you know, we, I, we have to um, be a like lubricant for the system, right? So we have to bring information, ideas, energy, connect them with people who want to do good and um, kind of push these projects forward uh, without taking on the burden of administration ourselves because we don't have, you know, we're just a commission. But, but yes, yeah, Georgia. That was what, exactly what I was thinking, Hillary, that we would, we would develop it, conceptualize it, and then find an entity that would be able to find the funding and the administration for it. I didn't see us yeah. doing this as such. Yes. I understand exactly what Ken is saying. Um, and we could only, it's only worth doing it if we feel like it would really make a huge difference. What are people's gut instincts? Is this like a top, it, I mean, cause it is gonna take a lot of work and we'd have to make a pl business plan and we'd have to have like business development discussions and we can do all that. Do we think that there are a large number of historic homes that would apply for own, historic homeowners who would apply for these loans? I just don't know anymore. I think 20 years ago, there probably were many more than there might be now. Yeah, that's the thing. My gut instinct is, is that anyone who owns an old house means that it's going to be in town or Sconset and it's going to be a huge financial asset. And, um, and if a gutter is an issue um, and they don't have cash on hand, they could borrow against the house uh, just for the preservation of their asset if they don't even care about history and architecture. So I don't, I, I think a need assessment would definitely um, need to be had to, to figure out it's how much demand is there. And I think David's point of, you know, houses that have transferred, those are people with money who have bought something, you know, planning to put money into it usually. Um, so the the idea of the things that haven't um, transferred uh, hands uh, for 10 or 20 or 30 years are probably going to be the likely candidates of the people who, you know, aren't savvy about getting money from a bank uh, and due to limited resources, you know, might not be able to get that uh, loan, um, that home improvement loan. But um, yeah, I, th I think a little bit of research would need to go into to what is the need. Um, you had your hand up. You're muted. So I, I kind of, as an extension of what Angus just said, Nantucket being what it's become, I'm not sure there are that many people here who are going to need financial assistance to fix, you know, things up unless it's a total, absolute disastrous situation. If they've inherited the place and they're young, and uh, you know, and they they need to spend whatever funds they have to, to educate their kids or or whatever, uh, that's one thing. But I don't know anybody in the Antarctica today that buys a house for two, $2 million that doesn't have enough money to, you know, fix the shutters and, and uh, put a new deck on and. Okay, so it sounds like we think that it's possible that there isn't this as much need for this, but um, I think the question is, you know, Georgia, you, you raised your hands and said this was something you were really interested in. It, would you, does anybody on this commission want to kind of do some in, investigation in terms of market sizing and needs assessment for this? I see David has his hand up. 
Yeah, well, I'm also volunteering for that. Um, but, but yes, I do have something I want to say. And I think it's more of a phil philosophical question. You know, you, you raised the, the issue earlier that if there were 1500 homes, you know, that, that, that qualified for this type of need versus 200 homes, I still wonder if those 200 homes deserve the, the type of recognition and the time and effort from our commission in, in order to try and develop or at least preliminary research this idea. Okay. So whether we preserve 1500 structures or 200, I still think at the end of the day, we're doing our, we're doing our job. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be enough to get donors interested in seeding a fund at, or a bank, you know, but I, a fair, very fair point. And um, Georgia, sorry, we couldn't hear you. No, I, I think I'd like to say that if, da if David uh, can help me just using those tools that he has about figuring out how many pre-75 structures there are and how many um, have been sold within the last 10 years, we could get at least a preliminary number of whether there's some number, some amount of people we could, could conceivably be interested in this project and then decide if it's worth taking from there. That would be amazing. And I'm, I'm sure Holly can help with uh, her records as well. Yeah, and if you come back, okay, so we, we can be your first people you need to convince that this is a worthwhile project. And if everybody is convinced that it is based on what you find out, um, you know, I know the, um, the, the local president of Cape Cod Five, they did a solar fund I could see this as being maybe similar. You know, they set up a special loan program for people wanting to do solar projects. Um, and uh, and then we, of course, oh, you know what? I did, I actually do have a better answer to where the money is could possibly come from, Ken. Um, wind Mitigation Fund. The Wind Mitigation Fund, which is not yet set up. Well, let's deal know. with that when we get to it, Hillary. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just saying that I think there are enough kind of there's enough potential, but we have to 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 be convinced that it's really worth doing. OK, can we move on to other ideas? Unfortunately, I have to leave, Hillary. Thank oh, you. thank you. all. Well, for Georgia, thank you so much for raising your hand for this. And um, I can't wait to see what you and David come back with. I'll email you, David. OK, Sounds good, Georgia. OK, thanks. Um, OK, then. Other topics, um, the preservation plan for town owned historic resources. Um, so this is something that the idea was that the town, you know, the federal government has and other towns um, have passed, you know, you don't have to pass a law. Some people have that. I mean, there is a bylaw that a town could choose to adopt that is similar to the Preservation, uh, the Historic um, Resources Protection Act of 1966, where a town says they will not expend their own funds um, it, it, in ways that adversely affect historic resources. So there are town versions of that that could be adopted. But short of that, there's also just the idea of having a preservation plan to make sure that the town is well educated and well informed about what historic resources it has. Um, and um, we have a little bit of money in the budget, $5,000, which I think would pay for um, surveys, at least surveys of town owned historic resources. Um, and I wondered what people thought about that. I was thinking the same thing that five thousand dollars that you referred to is. I think if you you know there's, I, I tried to put together a list of his town owned historic properties, and there's a fair amount of them. The buildings, the only buildings I can come up with are the Jetties Building, the Town Hall, and the Fire Station, and um, I don't know what what kind of historic information or surveys we have on those buildings, but. You know, at the moment, the Jetty's building, they're proposing to take off the porch and, and build this huge wooden structure, um, permanent wooden structure on top of the, you know, over the existing porch. And it's really changing the historic character of that building. So I think it would be useful to have a survey on that building and, and the other ones. And I, think, I don't know if you can do a, 
I'm sure you can do a survey on the various properties and, and objects, the meridian markers, the monuments, things like that, that the town are on town property that should be well preserved or protected. So I like this one. I think it's worth moving forward. Barbara? Um, I'm on the Cemetery Commission and we are, are in the midst of doing a major survey of the uh, town owned property uh, that are cemeteries. And so that would not need to be duplicated because that report is um, is pretty much getting finalized. So uh, that would be one that that we would not have to spend money on. That's great. Thank you for bringing that up, Barbara. Um, I just want to mention for the benefit of the commission, um, I've been actually kind of involved a little bit with um, the cemetery commission on that. So thank you, Barbara. Um, and I've asked to be able to share um, those locations with PAL so that they can have it with our survey plan, at least for the locations part, which would be beneficial when we're, we're doing that. I just wanted to mention that when you think of a preservation plan, I think it's important to, um, and maybe this is just the planner in me, but um, plans are living, breathing documents. So they're always, and that's very important to understand, um, they can always be uh, changed, modified, what have you. They're not set in stone. A, B, they're, we don't want them to sit on a shelf. And I'll tell you any plan that I'm associated with, I'm not gonna allow it to sit on a shelf. They're, they're, they're gonna be used. C, preservation plans can be, and this is something that I've, um, from having different uh, classes with MHC, preservation plans can be any type of thing. For mm -hmm. instance, the survey plan that we're currently working on with PAL, that's a type of preservation plan, first and foremost. The cemetery commission's plan that they've, they've been working on, that's a type of preservation plan. So I don't want people to think, lose focus on, um, you know, we could be so broad and it be something that's associated with the master plan as an addendum, or it can be these individual plans. So I, I just I just wanted to bring that up to the to the commission that that there are different levels of preservation plans. Um, and the MHC does encourage multiple um, any type. It can be, you know, a page long, for instance, or it could be a, a, a mammoth book. Um, I did want to mention that, you know, with with the funding available, there are some things that, um, again, I've reached out to um, town admin on, on this and they're working with, with finance on what exactly we would have to do to make sure we don't lose that additional $5,000. Um, first of all, it, it, I would, it's, it's more or less keeping it within the same scope. So, um, we may want to do utilize if we want, want to do a preservation plan of whatever we're doing, whether it's for the town owned historic resources or um, or something else. I think that I don't think we need to focus on that five thousand dollars right now. I think that's something that we can work in for the next fiscal year's budget because we want to be able to retain the same scope. I'm, I'm hoping we can just continue that $5,000 and put it towards what PAL's already working on. Um, that would be the easiest from my discussions with town admin. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Well, the budget is already for next fiscal year is done. I mean, we have our budget for next fiscal year. I, right. I, my, my, I, I, I just, um, Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Holly. <laughs> I didn't mean no, to I just, I'm just, we can, we're early in the game to be able to establish more of a scope now for it and understand what funding source we're going to have available from that fiscal year. So basically, it's easier right now because this money that we've allocated through town meeting for this current project that we're working on, where we, we received uh, 22.5 from MHC. It's a total $45,000 grant where we have $50,000 that was allocated through town meeting. So we have $5,000 left. We have, um, I believe till June when the new fiscal year starts and Ken, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I believe that's when it is to utilize it. Um, yes. It's easier to retain um, and continue with for, through procurement reasons, 
through the scoping contract reasons to actually just do a scope specifically for that $5,000 that we have to continue the work that Powell is doing again, sidebar, um, if Powell is inclined to, to actually do that with us. And I formulated an email to Ginny. I just haven't hit sent yet, okay. um, but that is in the work in progress. Um, okay. Versus doing an actually completely new yeah. project. Is, that's yeah, my point. I get it. I get it. So here's what I would like to propose. Um, Mickey went through and identified a, a cursory basis, and Holly also probably knows this, you know, off the top of her head, that which structures the town owns that actually are historic. We don't have Form Bs for any of those structures. We have a lot of information from the um, uh, PIN, the Preservation Institute in Nantucket, on the jetties. But like the fire station, the town hall, the town hall is not even considered historic by the town. But, you know, so um, and the fire station is like actually quite historic. So um, what if we asked Pal, keeping in mind the advice that Holly just gave us, if um, if we gave if we generated the list, we got Holly, you know, Mickey and Holly worked together, got the list, showed it to Ken, got, you know, Ken can help make sure the list is right. And then we ask Pal to give us a quote for doing the form Bs because producing architectural surveys on buildings is what this money is allocated for. And um, what we need are some, you know, architectural surveys of these buildings. And a preservation plan is actually, you know, as you said, Holly, in evolution, it relies on these surveys. So I think any kind of preservation plan needs to work with the facilities plan um, and it's a longer conversation, but just getting the data and getting the building surveyed and the form B's created, I think that would have a lot of value to the town is within our scope and we have money earmarked for it. And that's what I would propose we do. I just have a comment, Hillary. I, yeah. I, if, 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 if we're gonna be talking about setting up a preservation plan, I think then we should look at the different aspects of preservation that we're concerned about. Uh, Mickey started out with, with talking about buildings. So there, there's a preservation plan with respect to buildings. He then talked about monuments and, and, and things. So there should be a preservation plan with respect to what we do or know about uh, the different monuments that are in the ground or out uh, on the middle of the road. Uh, and then the third area is preservation of documents that we talked about earlier. Um, and then is there a fourth category that, that we should be thinking about in terms of what's important from a historical perspective and have a definition of the scope of a plan with respect to how you deal with those and don't have to do all of it at one point in time, but, but then, then what, what you then developing is a, a, um, a scope of what a probation plan preservation plan is and looks at the different aspects of the community's assets uh, which should be covered within a outline of, of, a, of a plan to be able to preserve those assets. Just a thought. Yeah so I, I guess what I'm suggesting is this first bullet point initiate preservation plan for town owned historic resources is that I'm suggesting that we revise that to be um, generate Form Bs, you know, MHC uh, Form Bs, which are building forms for town owned structures. That and get our current consultant to quote on it if they can do that and, yeah. and get it allocated before June when we lose the money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's, again, that why I brought up the fact that there's certain levels of preservation plan, but what Ken is referring to you know, that's be something I think would be very beneficial um, at some point down the road. But I, I do agree that the form Bs, the updating the HDC surveys, um, as they've been called for the last 60 years or so, um, is, is important. And it's not, it's not just an important aspect of the HDC and the Historical Commission and now is the joint CLG, but it's also something that's been addressed and um, mentioned within our master plan. So it is a town functionality and quite frankly even the strategic plan from the select board as historic preservation is outlined so um yeah i think that might be a, a good avenue i just i needed to do uh, i needed to reach out to um town admin on that though um 
Um, so what should we do next? Just, I mean, I agree. I love to see a survey of town-owned properties. I have no idea. I mean, Mickey rattled off a few, but I have no. There aren't. There aren't many. There are three. There aren't many. Oh, no. um, I would beg to differ um, because if you if you bring in the fact that we have the Meridian Stones, which are in town um, right away, those those are historic resources. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I, I wouldn't oh. tell you about. I was talking about buildings as opposed to properties. Oh, buildings itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Land Bank owns a historic structure. I that's a quasi town uh, function. There, there's your know, structure. Um, there's a few. There's yeah, a few. There's, now, maybe there's, I there's think not over much. The, no, I don't think there's a lot. But if you add in the other monuments, and again, those those could be. Um, that was my the, second uh, category, Holly. Yeah, well, yeah. My, my, so my those, second, those my... would get those would get object forms. So there's Correct. a form. O's, I guess, for objects. So, and yes. we don't, and the cemetery's already been done, being done. So right. Mickey, could I, would you have the interest in coming, working with Holly to come up with the list and liaising with Holly about whether or not we can, you know, how we get this money deployed? You're talking specifically about buildings, it sounds like. Well, no, I mean, I think I think we should have a list of resources and then we should figure out how far the money will go as far as the surveys. But the the, the work product are to produce surveys of the town owned historic resources, and that will be a mix of objects. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'd started this list already and I've got the meridian markers besides the buildings. The monument, the obelisk on Main Street, cemetery. Barbara's already said it's taken care of. Um, the Kennedy bunker. Can we throw that in? Is that his uh, historic town, property? That's historic. Yep. Um, and then the fountain on Main Street. And I think anybody on the commission, if there's anybody that can think of anything else, um, is throw the them Surfside out there. is the Surfside Shack town, or the one at Children's Beach that they give bids on? I don't know if they're historic, but are but these are all, yeah, I mean, I think we They're should have as long a list as possible. Yeah. And then we're going to, you know, really figure it out. Yeah. Um, and Mickey, don't forget the fire station in Sconset. Yes, Please. thank right. you. Good, yeah. good one, yeah. The, the other thing, Mickey, is do we want to include federally owned um, resources here? So the Brant Point Lighthouse, Lighthouse is desperately in need of repairs. And um, the Great Point Lighthouse is not actually a historic structure. Correct. But it is greatly in need of repairs. And we could actually make the case that even though it's not yet 50 years old, it should be recognized on the list of historic resources. And that would be something that we would have a dialogue with the Park Service about and they may or may not agree. I think the association with Kennedy um, and the threatened status and the significance of that structure um, might argue for that not to get into that. But anyway, question for you and Holly, if you're gonna work on this about what to do about the federally owned um, I yeah. do, again, I just want to make it a point that we may not be able to utilize this exact leftover funding for exactly this. I just wanted to- Why not? Well, I've got a clear direction on how to actually utilize that rest of that funding meeting procurements process on basically extending the existing scope. This is, yes, it's for, historic resources, but there's a little bit more involved with it. It's not just saying, hey, could you add an additional a dozen or 20 uh, structures within the fish lots? It's, it's actually creating a whole new scope and trying to figure out how many we actually have and all that. So I just, it might be a little bit too much to, to do between now and right. um, you know, when the funding actually has to be utilized. So some creative thinking. Um, the surveys is for a pilot survey, right? That's what the, the, the project is a pilot survey and we chose the fish lots. Um, so anyway, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, these are exactly the same architectural surveys with the exact same prod product. So hopefully there'll be some flexibility about where we do it. I mean, in any way, the, um, well, whatever, you know what? I think everybody, does anybody think this is a bad idea to try to 
push forward and Mickey, are you willing to do it? And Holly, are you willing to work with Mickey on it? Yeah, I think the least we can do is start with a list and, and see um, what might qualify in that list. Um, maybe Holly can look into what's appropriate to be on that list right. or not. That, that's, that's my only thing. I don't, I just don't want the commission to get focused on the fact this is what we want to do. And if I get told by procurement, no, it has to be in line with what's already been done. That's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> At the end of the day, yeah. I understand they're all the same and it's the same initiative, but I, again, I'm trying to be, you know, in the middle here. <laughs> so, yeah, well, let's have a follow up conversation because this, the time till June is going to fly by and it's going to take a long time to get whatever these approvals, but it would just be so sad to see this money not go into the general fund and not be available for preservation, which is what the town meeting right. dedicated it for. Tom? I don't want to see that happen. Yeah, I know. Tom? I think Mickey might add uh, also the uh, Madiket fire station to that list. And I'm not sure. But can That's I owned by the NHA, Tom. Oh, it is? Okay. That's what I was going to ask you. Yep. And, and also the Coffin School. That's not owned. Is that owned by the town? That's well, not owned by the town, as far as I know. The town has jurisdiction over a lot because we we uh, gave up a lot of our right to that when uh, we we applied for CPC money. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't I don't know that myself. I'm the president of the board of trustees there, but I don't know that. Okay. Well, let's everybody give your ideas to Mickey, okay, and he can process them. Okay. Um, so we have this meeting set to 12.30. It, do we have everybody to 12.30 or are there pe other people? I know Clement, we lost Clement in Georgia. But... No, and, and I've got about four more minutes, so. Okay. All right, so the next thing on the list is um, tribes and state archeologists. Uh, so Susan and I um, talked about this and had a, um, some ideas about how to move forward. You can see I put some emails in the packet, which was an email exchange where I communicated some questions to the um, uh, local government coordinator representative, Jennifer Doherty, who is our contact when we have questions at the MHC. And I haven't heard back from her. Uh, she forwarded our inquiry with to the state archaeologist. Um, the question is, how do you do an archae does anybody do archaeological plans? Pre you know, I'm going to just share my screen so I can remember what I asked her. Uh, um, okay. Can everybody see? Uh, okay. So uh, I said, Referrals about planning for archaeological resources. Is there such a thing as an archaeological preservation plan? How might Nantucket go about exploring whether to undertake such a planning effort? And she said, I forwarded it. Yes, archaeological reconnaissance and preservation plans are something that communities do. We occasionally get requests for funding them through the surveying grant program. Um, and I asked her about other sources of money and she said she didn't know and to ask she said go to the national park service grants page or the national association of hippos which are the tribal historic preservation officers um so what susan susan do you want to talk a little bit about this and what we talked about or do you want i don't want to put you um, on the spot I, I might just uh say a few uh, comments, and that is that when we start to discuss and think about um, planning for archaeological resources, I know that, you know, everybody thinks primarily about the um, Indigenous people and that part of archaeology as being archaeology. But I think you also have to, in listening to all the discussions, um, about historic structures and especially um, the most recent discussions with basements and masonry and kind of the base structure, uh, structure of buildings, that that is historic archeology span as well. And when people go into these basements and they start ripping things up, especially in the downtown area, you're getting into archaeological resources, which are 
underneath the present day buildings that predate the buildings themselves. So especially, uh, you know, pre-fire. So there was so much uh, rubble and um, I'm sure there are still foundations and things that they filled in to then rebuild town. So mm -hmm. nobody ever, I, I bring it up in every venue that I can think of, but um, I can't get anybody to be interested in saying, you know, when you rip these things up and, and again, right now in our history, what's happening is people are putting in basements where they never were before. And when they do that, the wealth of archeological material um, that comes up is unbelievable. Now, how do we deal with that? And are we interested in trying to deal with that? Because it basically is interior work, even though it's not structural interior work. Um, or are we, do we create a separate category that's prehistoric? And Hillary, I know that I've mentioned to you that I'm also interested in the whole waterfront and underwater archeology span as well, um, which is, uh, as far as I know, never been discussed um, uh, in any town meeting that I've ever <laughs> heard of. So um, the whole waterfront is just fascinating. And um, so those are kind of things to, to think about when you're thinking about archeological planning is what are you really talking about? Are you just talking about uh, pre-contact, which would be, you know, before the town was created. So before they saw, you know, white people on a regular basis. Um, and in the case of this island, contact is very, um, uh, I, I don't know when it actually was because obviously there was trading going on here um, all the time in the islands. Um, you know, since the very first contact uh, that they ever had with Europeans, um, but maybe they didn't have structures and 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 uh, things like that. So um, I think it's extremely important. Um, the other issue that you and I have talked about, Hillary, is that when you when you talk about um, prehistoric, especially and Cemeteries, um, of course, are a big part of that here on the island. Um, you get into this whole secrecy um, pact that archeologists have for fear that people will pot hunt the sites. And so it becomes very difficult for us um, as a commission when, when we're not given the tools of maps and uh, site references um, to actually create some sort of a, a real plan when we don't really know, we're not given the information. And um, so that's a huge hurdle for us to uh, kind of get over. Um, and I, I don't know if, you know, if you have specific questions or Hillary, I know you have um, a lot of other thoughts on this. I think it's great these first few letters and um, I hope to have some time coming up to actually do a little more research into the actual uh, federal and state regulations right now and how we might use those to our advantage. Um, and I, I think that's the bis basic start and, and to see if we can find any other communities um, that to start with communities that are similar to ours that that might include the historic and prehistoric archaeology in their plan um and then if we can't find that to work our way out to people you know further out west who are primarily um cataloging and interested in their in their prehistoric sites yeah thank you susan tom you have a hand up I have, a, I have a question for Susan. When, when mm -hmm. you said earlier that you uh, interior or in, in interior work, what what were you? What does that mean? 
Interior. Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, when you said interior work, you, you used oh, those terms. So having, what, what does that mean? Sure, it is having to do with the with the um, digging of basements, which we're seeing downtown, especially. Um, and there's absolutely no nobody knows. The only people who know what's down there are the guys that dig the holes. And, you know, I talk to them now and again, and, you know, if they're interested in a specific type of thing, they collect it. And if they're not, it goes into the landfill and, or wherever they're dumping their, their fill. Um, so that type of thing downtown is really historic and probably sits on prehistoric um, sites as well. I mean, people usually build in the same place for thousands of years. They don't just all of a sudden like pick a new spot. So when you see development and redevelopment and redevelopment again, that's usually indicates that if you go down deep enough, you're gonna find, you know, prehistoric stuff. So that's what I mean by interiors and that you know, since we really can't regulate, once you go inside a structure, I don't know of any rules and regulations that that allow us to, you know, really get in there and and have any um, even commentary on it. Okay, thank you. Hmm. So when Susan and I talked about this, um, we landed on the approach that really having an archeological plan would be the way to go because um, it would allow us to get professionals who really know what they're doing to um, assess our situation on Nantucket and advise the community through us of you know, ways to enrich our knowledge and be respectful of our history, be respectful of indigenous people um, and come up with the right kind of advice um, about this really delicate subject. Um, and what I would like to propose, this is a long-term project. I mean, this is not like a a current fiscal year or 2022 project, but we can at least get our arms around a path forward on it. Um, and so we want to hear back from the state about archeological plans. Susan mentioned other communities. I mean, the vineyard actually still has like indigenous people living right. communities. So they might be more, more um, you know, aware of this or have more, more guidance um, or engagement on this topic than Nantucket does. Uh, we know St. Augustine um, because we looked through their preservation plan like two years ago when we were thinking about a preservation plan that had a lot of emphasis on archeology span because of their history as a 16th century um, community. So anyway, I think what I'd like to do on this one is to see if we could maybe develop a source of funding and um, a scope of work for an archaeological plan. Um, and I don't think we would really do that through the town because we don't have the resources. So it would need to be gifted to us. Somebody, we'd have to find someone who wanted to do it, who would want to give it to us as a gift. Um, similar to the way we did for the preservation engineering um, uh, report about the streets. Thoughts sure, or comments? I'm sure Susan uh, must, must be aware of it. Uh, Middleborough, Massachusetts uh, has a, a, a bit of a, any, any um, reading or information that I've looked for uh, about indigenous people, Middleborough always is in there somewhere. Huh. I don't okay. know what it is that uh, about Middleborough because I, I don't, all I do is go through there at sixty miles an hour. But uh, <laughs> they've got they've got something there because they're they're always in the periodicals that I'm I'm reading about. Okay, 
And that Hillary kind of goes to what you're saying. It usually has to do with the fact that somebody um, at some point in time that had money and interest um, started that whole ball rolling uh, for the town. And it comes into what you're saying, Hillary, where we see the need to create a um, narrative around the, the importance and the, the just general interest of this topic uh, to just the general population, as well as to, uh, you know, all the stakeholders involved being, you know, real estate and, and everybody else. And uh, it's, it's a tough, tough sell, but I think it's really, really important. And I think we can do it. I really think that, you know, it's a direction we need to go in. What do other people think? I couldn't agree more. Just digging in my garden, sometimes I'll find <laughs> arrowheads. I mean, you know, I mean, how easy is that? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Any other other comment? Yeah, Angus. Angus. Uh, I think I think it's a a a, a really um, valuable. Uh, piece that that we could pursue. Um, I can think of a gazillion reasons why not to, um, and that's probably why it doesn't exist. Um, I mean, um, legally and private uh, property, but um, but to have literally another level of understanding of what has existed here, I think would be invaluable. Um, we 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 have a, so much history of uh, once there was contact, but, but uh, and, and I'm thinking European contact, but, but everything previous to that, there, there, there's a rich history to know about and, and where were people settled and what, what was there, you know, where was the, the hunting area and the housing and the, and the, the communities. And, um, uh, and I know that they're focused in different places around the island, but but who knows where and how much. And um, uh, I, I, I think that would just be terribly interesting to know uh, and, and uh, uh, somehow survey and protect um, what's there. And it's, it's true when the, the bulldozer goes in, uh, there's, you know, there, there's zero accountability unless someone actually digs up a body. Um, there's, there's, there's almost nothing that's ever reported. Um, and so um, I, I, I think it would be a, a really great thing to pursue. I just wouldn't know where to begin. I, I just have a question is what the purpose of the plan would be in terms of the benefit to the community, uh, as opposed to simply historical information as to whether or not how this might be used. Does it affect property rights, uh, existing property rights? Does it affect the, the person's ability what to do with their property in terms of uh, is this another step in the building uh, department process? I, I I just those are just questions that that I'm just trying to understand what the what the what the purpose is and, and and what the end result is in terms of where the benefit is to the community for us to pursue. Well, I think that's where we need to uh, look to other communities and see what has been successful for them and whether this is just a um, a project uh, where, you know, in certain areas, I mean, th there are laws, federal laws, and if you get certain kinds of funding, you have to have an environmental impact report. That's why, from what I understand, the town uh, turns down certain um, funding uh, so that they do not have to have uh, an archaeological survey and you know, get involved in the messiness of that type of thing. Um, but part of this could be um, education um, that would create an interest by homeowners, if we're talking about downtown and in people's basements, where you might be able to get people to invite you in to kind of document different things without saying there's any control over 
stopping what they're doing or anything like that. Um, just, I, I think that um, an, an interest, I guess in, uh, I should also mention that there are maps and the town does already know where the sensitive sites are. There has been fairly comprehensive survey work, but there's been no, um, no method uh, to designate these spots and uh, that I know of, and maybe um, somebody else does know that they are used at some point in the process of construction. But um, I have not seen them referred to and used um, in a in a broader sense of how to utilize different uh, portions of the island, you know, it, and open spaces especially. Um, so I think I have... that there's room for a plan to just. Um, see what is possible to identify and and use. Yes, and, Yeah, and further to that, I have a, an example of one way that could be beneficial to the community. Well, first of all, I think knowing about our history and knowing what's under the ground and what we can learn before we completely wreck it is, I mean, if we're not all on the same page that that's important, then why are we on a historical commission? I mean, right. this is about, you know, the, this philosophical belief that we don't want to forget our past so um, or just be willfully ignorant about our past we you know we're not going to do that so um, but for example um, Nantucket has a land bank that owns areas that have archaeological resources that are not explored or understood what if um, in partnership with our friends um, who have preserved these spaces we had an educational program to allow high school students to really do hands-on field work in archaeology. Um, Nantucket has many uh, lands of, that are actually National Register eligible as archaeological lands. Um, and people don't know this. Uh, if we started to be aware, we could find just a bubbling up of interest that could benefit um, that could have a lot of benefit for education. But these sorts of things would be covered in an archeological plan. I mean, it's not for us to decide like, this is what we should do, or this is where it is. Um, but I think if we don't give this some breathing space because we're terrified that we might hold back the building industry, mm -hmm. um, that would be really a travesty. It would be really very sad. I just, if, if it's okay. Um... Yeah. As a actual direct descendant of Thomas Mayhew, who purchased Nantucket <laughs> from Lord Sterling, Sterling in, uh, what was it, a long time ago, um, I I've been able to figure that out. He, he's my 12th great grandfather. So obviously Nantucket history is near and dear to my heart. That said, <coughs> when it comes to archaeology and from my very brief conversations a couple of years ago with um, Jonathan Patton from MHC, Nantucket does not have an archaeology by, by law. Um, and I would just be cautious on, there's one thing of having a plan and try to understand what we do have and knowledge and that stuff. It's another of trying to regulate property rights and ownership of land from an archaeology perspective without having an archaeological bylaw that would have to go through town meeting and I'm not too sure how that would be favored I, I just want to caution that you know th there needs to be some understanding of exactly like kind of what Ken said on exactly what is the intention obviously I want to know more about my land that my family's been here for many generations on and I would love to pass that on to my children my my daughter over here is a 12th generation Nantucket native so yeah I I, I agree However, um, you know, I think we need to be cautious as well as um, this should also be something that needs to have a little more direction from town leadership um, and, and get their, um, you know, blessing on before moving forward. So again, there's one thing of having a plan, but there's another thing of having regulation. So that's all.
<laughs> Sorry, I no one has mentioned regulations. Okay, so we are not bringing this for, I just wanna be clear because people watch this recording. We are not bringing forward the idea of an archeological land because we wanna limit private property rights or change building rights. Okay, that is not the intention here. The intention is to understand our history, understand archeological resources, create opportunities for education and um, interpret scholarship for our community. Um, and that is a benefit. And I hope that everybody is on board with that. And if not, I would like to hear about it now from everyone. I just wanna say that I completely agree with what you just said and that that's why the, the um, mention that, you know, this is if nothing else, just to let people know what what they have on their property, you know, just for an individual, you know, educational, as you say, um, uh, tool for people. It is not um, in any means to uh, regulate anything or anybody. And no one should be afraid of the archeology span that is around them. Uh, and Madam Chair, through you to uh, Ms. Handy, I, I think I heard you earlier saying that you are not aware of any other community in Massachusetts that has, in fact, uh, uh, created such a plan. Is that correct? Did I correctly I hear you? Done, I have not done any research on it as of yet, so I, I do, am not aware. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll find out. So Susan and I would like to work on this, we'd like to find out if there are other communities that have plans um, and just have some idea of what the right thing to do is here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to know, just going around, since this seems to be a little bit contentious um, and uh, I, I don't want it to be, um, but if it is contentious, I don't want to move forward without the full support of the commission. And, and when I say move forward, I mean, find out, you know, scope of work, more specifics so that we can then decide if we want or even are able to have any kind of a plan. Well, and from the town's point of view, I just want to reiterate the point that unless there's a clear understanding from the town's point of view of the purpose of this and the benefit to the community, uh, uh, it is of, of concern, my concern that I will be raised with town administration as to the expenditure. I mean, you, you have, your time is free and what have you not, but but I'm, I just wanna make sure that within the scope of what the Historic Commission is doing, that that is the appropriate um, allocation of time and resources with respect to something that does have a potential benefit to the community. Great, I'm, I'm happy to donate my time to uh, look into that and come up with an answer for you. Yeah, and archeology span is specifically in our, um, enabling legislation. Uh, commissioners, can I just hear from people about this? Um, Mickey. I, I, you know, <laughs> nothing wrong with information. I'd love, I'd love to know more about it. And I think it's only going to benefit anybody that's interested in it. So I'm, I'm certainly in favor of it. Ditto. David. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say just like the small loan fund research, it's very possible that it doesn't pan out, but I think that we wouldn't be doing our duty if we didn't look into it. So I'm all for it. Okay, thank you, David. Angus, thumbs up from Angus. Okay, Barbara, Barbara is giving a thumbs up. Um, okay, so I think we have, um, you know, I'm really thrilled at the number of people on this commission who've raised their hand to work on these individual projects. That's the only way we're going to cover the ground we want to cover. And, you know, we're volunteers. Not everything is going to work out. But I love having big goals and using our energy and creativity to try to push the ball forward on our mission. And um, we didn't get to building with Nantucket in mind. <laughs> um, but I think it, uh, I don't know, you know, we have five minutes. Does anybody want to say anything as far as laying the groundwork for a future meeting on that topic? Angus. That's 
a huge concern. I feel like the landscape of Nantucket has drastically changed mm -hmm. um, exponentially uh, over the over the decades. I mean, it's it's been forty years for me, but I I noticed more change thirty years ago than forty years ago, and more twenty than thirty, and more ten than and more than five than ten years ago. So I mean, it just keeps getting more and more intense, and I feel like um, I feel like the ball is getting dropped. So I I that's that's a huge concern of mine. I, f I feel like what what is being proposed gets more and more. Um, further away from the from the guidelines, and the HDC gets further away from from the guidelines as they review. Mm -hmm. So, it's okay. a big subject, but I feel like it's definitely worth considering because it's it it's um, it's definitely part of the concern about um, preservation and history here. Thank you, Angus. Um, any other comments? I mean, especially thoughts about what we could do or, you know, unfortunately, I thought we were work, working forward with these monthly meetings with the HTC, but that's been put to the side um, for now. Do we wanna keep this on our agenda? Angus is saying yes, I'm seeing yeah. heads nod. I, I do, I also agree that building with Nantucket in mind is a, it's a natural for the CLG, but nothing's really happening. Um, and I think maybe, you know, if we politely ask the HDC if they would like us to be maybe, I don't want to say take the lead, but help push it forward. Um, I mean, you know, that. they're going to say no, Mickey. I, I'm sorry, but just in the interest of time, like they're going to say no, they don't want our help. Um, and I'm not even sure if they want to do preservation. I mean, the, the, this three Beaver Street, it's a nearly 300 year old structure that had not been destroyed. And they just said, fine, you know, we got to get these, uh, these old buildings up out of the dirt. So uh, it is that the, the modifications that they permitted were not in keeping with building with Nantucket in mind. They just weren't. And you know, what do we do when our architectural review board does not want to enforce or just has a different view of, of what should, should be permitted? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, the funding, the funding for the renovate, for the redo of building with Nantica in mind is, is already there. It's a CPC funded project, as far as I know. That's and it's correct. been there for six years, at least. And I, you know, I think anytime you ask the HDC about anything outside of a, a weekly meeting, they just throw their hands up and say, we don't have time for it. And, you know, I think that maybe we can help them make, you know, with that. And I, yeah. I don't think it will hurt to ask if they, if they would like help. Um, Hillary, I apologize. I'm gonna, I have to leave. Sorry. Thank you, Ken. We'll follow up. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Holly, you're our town you. preservation Sorry. planner. Holly, you're, you're our town preservation planner, okay? These things are near and dear to your heart as well as your job. So what can we do? Well, you know, okay, I'm on the spot. Um, the HDC, as mes most of you are aware, are extremely busy, extremely. Six and a half hours a week. Every Tuesday is a long day for me. With that said, and our commissioners, because they have jobs like a lot of people do. Um, with that said, and that's nobody's fault, but you know, just what's happened. Again, it's, you know, I think looking back at Nantucket's history in, in preservation and how we've evolved from 1955 till now is part of it. Did the commission realize in 1970, after Tristram's Landing, that when we created the entire island as a historic district, would 2020 <laughs> bring a world pandemic and make make our uh, you know real estate sales go berserk? Um, that's just the nature of the beast. I think it's been a you know it's there. You love it, you hate it. You know it's just the nature of it. So, with that said, and I can't speak for when they originally received the funding. I was. Um, I don't even know if I was actually at the plus office at the time, 
I've only been there with them since 2015. But with that said, um, this is their baby, if you will. This is their their um, their their bailiwick, their their design guidelines. And yes, I I, I think I think that there is definitely um, room for um, work with both commissions and and for it to be something through the CLG if they're so inclined. Um, but I, I think, and I think that would be the avenue to, to see if they would be willing to have a um, discussion about the design guidelines. And, and you know, again, I'm, I'm not too sure. You know, that yes, I will say that they um, need to be updated. It's been since I think 95 since that last publication. Yes, there have been amendments to it since then, but have a kind of a codification of it all. And yes, there were funding put forth. Um, and it, it just didn't go anywhere, really, at the end of the day, because of time. And, and um, I, I really don't know. Um, other than maybe this commission, if you all feel so, um, you know, inclined to um, get it going um, and assist on it to have a communication with the chairs um, and see how that goes. I, I really don't know what else to say other than that. Um, but I will mention this, that, you know, with our resilient Nantucket design guidelines as an addendum to building with Nantucket in mind, ma'am, I'm in a meeting, sorry, um, that that is a, an important step of understanding that we have still evolved. Um, I, I don't know. I really don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I mean, we're at the time we need to end our meeting, um, but uh, maybe we should keep this on the agenda um, because we're really seeing loss of historic material um, and we're not seeing, I mean, the HDC, like if this is their baby, baby needs new shoes. And like, we just can't keep going like this. And the fact that volunteers are overwhelmed with these unsustainable meeting, it's going to lead to um, things being missed and um, unrecoverable out outcomes. So let's just keep it on our agenda. And I, we've got a great slate of work and fabulous people signed up for it. Uh, uh, you know, an ongoing survey effort, um, which Holly is leading uh, with wonderful volunteers. So, Onward. Um, any other comments? Oh, oh, the last thing, the spa hot tub survey, the town association is gonna have that for their meeting on Tuesday, the results of it. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and uh, I, I don't, anything else, any other comments, anything anybody wants to say before we adjourn? Susan. I just wanna say thank you to you for all your work uh -huh. and, <laughs> For, for trying to lead us, even though we might be, you know, kind of going in different directions at different times. And, and I know how much hard work you put in. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Susan. David? Certainly want to echo what Susan just said, but also I'm curious if we have an update on the, um, the supports on the in-town telephone polls. Oh, yeah. Is, Mickey? Have we heard anything on that? Yeah. I mean, the only thing I've heard from discussing with Erica is that that it kind of it is what it is. There's they they agreed to do this. It kind of um, they said that they would try to um, be neater with their spray painting and possibly look at different colors. I mean, I don't think there's really much else we could do. We could we could possibly look at specific poles that we find are real eyesores and they might be open to to um working on those but um you can only wouldn't hurt to ask are they are they pretty insistent on spray painting them after the application of the support it just seems it's really tacky there's a couple on my street that are brat that are bad yeah i think they they you know erica was open to, to the, the conversation you could you could call her and ask her what you know she says about something like that that, that was my suggestion that perhaps they spray paint them with a flat spray paint mm -hmm. and they do it before they apply it to the pole. Yeah, makes total sense. 
too much sense. All right. I guess before we leave, I just wanted to mention that I'm not in no way against talking about archaeology. I think maybe some folks may have got that out for wrong, but I'm just at the end of the day wanting to be cautious on how this commission moves forward. That's all. So anyway, thank you. Can't even adjourn. We've got no chair. Should we, we move to adjourn? Well, I I'm sorry, to... guys. I just had to step away for a second. I'm still here. I think we can move to uh, we can move to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, we'll follow up by email with the um, just to to because we have a lot of individual work, so we'll send out you know minutes about what we decided, so everyone can keep track. And um, oh, we might be able to meet in person. Um, I think, uh, given that I probably have COVID right now, and here I am saying we should be in person. <laughs> um, if if we can do that, you know, we'll we'll touch base about it, if that makes sense for April. Okay, everyone, stay healthy. Yeah, Enjoy the springtime. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah.